Welcome to the live stream of Barnes Memorial Missionary Baptist Church. Now let's hear a word from our pastor, Reverend Basil Williams. God bless you, family. It's good to see you once again. And I hope everybody out there is well. And you're still trusting in God and believing that God is still there for you. We know he is because he's an awesome and a mighty God. No matter what our struggle may be this morning, no matter what we may be going through, no matter what pains and suffering we may be dealing with, God is still God, and he's able to help us through these things. So we come today, to, that's as we come every week, is to praise him and to worship him and to glorify his holy name, to lift him up and exalt him, for he's worthy of all of our praise. Yes. Oh, we know that uh, there are people who are trying to, to bring us down. We know the enemy's job is to kill, steal, and destroy us. But we know that we have an awesome God that has come to give us life, and not just any life, but to give us abundant life. So we come to praise his holy name today. So we're going to move on into the service, and we're going to have Deacon and Silver. She's going to do our reading for us this morning, and then her husband, Deacon Silver, is going to come and give us our morning prayer. God bless you. Let's have a wonderful time in the Lord. Hello, my brothers and sisters in Christ. Today I will be reading a scripture, and it's coming from Psalms 112, verses 1 through 10, and it reads as such. Praise ye the Lord. Blessed is the man that feareth the Lord, that delighteth greatly in his commandments. His seed shall be mighty upon earth. The generation of the upright shall be blessed. Wealth and riches shall be in his house and his righteousness endures forever. Amen. Until the upright there arises light in the darkness. He is gracious and full of compassion and righteous. A good man showeth favor and leaneth. He will guide his affairs with discretion. Surely he shall not be moved forever. The righteous shall be in everlasting remembrance. He shall not be afraid of evil tiding. Amen. His heart is fixed trusting in the Lord. His heart is established. He shall not be afraid until he see his desire upon his enemies. He have despaired. He have given to the poor. His righteousness endures forever. His horn shall be exalted with honor. The wicked shall see it and be grieved. He shall garnish with his teeth and melt away. The desire of the wicked shall perish. Amen. Amen. I have just read Psalms 112, verses 1 through 10, and may the reading of the word be a blessing to each and every one of you. Amen. Amen. And my brothers and sisters, again, I just want to say October is Breast Cancer Awareness Month. And as I was leaving my house, I was they had it on TV that because of the COVID-19, women are um, not going for their mammograms because they are afraid of the um, COVID-19. Mm -hmm. But as they say, cancer do not wait for anyone. Amen. If you've lost your jobs and don't have insurance, work with your doctors and see if they can't work something out for you because we still need to keep our health in our first for foremost on our minds. And today, I just want to say I voted, and I do hope that you will vote also. Amen. 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 Praise God. Amen. <laughs> Amen. Good morning, church family. Good morning. Let us pray. Oh, Heavenly Father, we come to you this morning in the name of Jesus. Thank you, oh, Heavenly Father, for watching over us as we slept last night and rest. Thank you, oh, Heavenly Father, for waking us up this morning, being able to clothe ourselves, oh, Heavenly Father, being able to walk and speak and hear, see, Oh, Heavenly Father, thank all these Lord. little things, we ask you to just thank you for them, oh, Heavenly yes, Father. Lord. We thank you for all the air we breathe, every breath we take, oh, Heavenly Father. Yes, oh, Lord. Heavenly Father, we just want to thank you this morning. Thank you, thank you for each and everything you have put here on this earth, yes. oh, Heavenly Father. Yes. Oh, Heavenly Father, we ask you to bless all the sick and shed ends, Lord God. Bless them, oh, Heavenly Father, whether it's at home, hospital, rest home, wherever they might be, oh, Heavenly Father, 
We ask you to touch them with the finger of love, O Heavenly Father. Yes. Strengthen them, O Heavenly Father. O Heavenly Father, we ask you to bless the, all the bereaved families, Lord God. Bless them, O Heavenly Father. Keep them, we keep them in our prayers, O Heavenly Father. We ask you to just keep on blessing them and strengthening them, O Heavenly Father, for yes. they can go through whatever they's going through with, Lord God. So we ask you today, this morning, Lord God, to bless each and every one, and we pray that everyone is safe and sound, O Heavenly Father. With all this virus going on, O Heavenly Father, we ask you to bless us through it. All this I ask to you in Jesus' name I yes. pray. Amen. Amen. Praise God. Thank you, Deacon Silver and Deacon De Silva, for the reading of the word and for that wonderful prayer. And in our wake up moment, we do want to say to each and every one of you, please go vote. Voting is important. We have, it has been record breaking voting um, throughout the nation for all that have early voting. And in North Carolina, we have early voting, and we want you to go out and vote early so that they, there will be no risk of you missing out on being able to vote on November the 3rd. You don't know what November the 3rd holds for you. So if you got that opportunity now to go vote, go vote now. Go uh, Put your, your voice forward that you may tell this nation that change must come, that we can't afford to continue to go on down the same road that we've been going down. We can't afford wickedness and hatefulness and we can't afford uh, dishonesty in our government anymore. We can't afford these things because people are hungry. People are hurting. People are sick. People are dying. Yes. And we need to be able to, to bring about a change that will, will, will mend our hearts, that we will become a one nation again instead of a, a, a two nation uh, uh, in one nation. Lord God, I, I, I ask you that you put into our minds the right things to do. And also I want to say to us, as uh, Sister Silver has uh, already alluded to, is that we need to still make sure that we're getting the right examinations that, we, that are necessary for the maintain our health health and to protect us from uh for we can get early detection of diseases and uh, things that may be attacking our bodies so men you need to take your uh your tests and psa's and all of those things and uh, and uh women you need to get your mammograms and uh and those are the common things that 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 hit us um that can be prevented but there are other things also we need uh those of us that are diabetic, we need to take care of ourselves and watch what we consume into our bodies. And, and, and because one thing for sure, we know that with diabetes, it, 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 it almost attacks every organ in your body. And so you need to be mindful of that. And we, you know, we pray for our uh, sick and our shut-in and our uh, church family and um we have lost uh, a few of our loved ones, our church loved ones, and our and people that were just like family to us are here recently. And then we have some more that have been hospitalized and some that are homebound. And we just want to ask you all that we pray one for another. Yes. So wake up, yes. church family, yes. and let us be in prayer and let us vote and do what's right for our nation. So the word says to us, given to Caesar that which is Caesar. So government yeah. must be done. Yeah. So yeah. let us do the right thing. Yeah. And if we move into the word for today, we're going to look at the sixth chapter of Matthew. And we're going to start reading at the 25th uh, verse. Actually, I want to start reading from the 24th verse. So There's an uh, important statement there. That's Matthew 6. Starting at verse 24. It says, No man can serve two masters, for either he will hate the one and love the other, or else he will hold to the one and despise the other. Ye cannot serve God and mammon. Therefore I say unto you, Take no thought for your life, what ye shall eat, or what ye shall drink, nor 
uh, yet for uh, your body, what ye shall put on is not the life more than meat and the body than raiment. Behold the fowls of the air, for they sow not, neither do they reap, nor gather barns, yet your heavenly Father feedeth them. Are ye not much better than they? Which of you, by taking thought, can add one cubit unto his stature? And why take ye thought for raiment? Consider the lilies of the field, how they grow. They toil not, neither do they spin. And yet I say unto you that even Solomon, all his glory, was not arrayed like one of these. Wherefore, if God so clothed the grass of the field, which is, uh, is, which today is, and tomorrow is cast into the oven, shall he not much more clothe you? O ye of little faith, therefore take no thought, saying, What shall we eat? Or what shall we drink? Or, or wherewithal shall we be clothed? For all these things do the Gentiles seek. For your heavenly Father knoweth that ye have need of all these things. But seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things shall be added unto you. Take therefore no thought for the morrow, for the morrow shall take thought for the things of itself. Sufficient unto the day is the evil thereof. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you for your mighty blessings. We glorify you now, Lord God, as your servants stand here, Lord God, seeking you to bring about the power of the Holy Spirit upon him, and that he may speak plainly and clear, that all may understand what you have given him to preach to the children of God. So, Lord God, that being said, I need preaching power, the power to bring forth a word and that will change and make lives strong, that will bring healing, will bring peace into hearts. Father, we pray, Lord God, that you allow me to uh, decrease as you increase through me, Lord God. So your servants stand ready, Lord God, to be used by you. And Lord God, here I am. Take me now and use this vessel as you, as you will, Lord God. And Lord God, allow sinners to cry out, what must I do to be saved? And backslide us to say, Lord God, what would you have me to do? This is my prayer and our prayer in the name of our Lord and our Savior, Jesus the Christ. In Jesus' name we pray, amen, amen, amen and amen. amen. We want to use as a topic today, first things first. First things first. And this scripture lesson that it was read in your hearing allows us to think about our faith and our trust in God. It's not a conviction on planning, but it is to warn us about the time that we spend worrying and setting ourselves up for depression and anxiety. Sometimes we care so much about what's happening around us or so much about what tomorrow holds and, and many times and as, as the scripture says that what can you do to add one cubit to your statue? What, what are you able to do to make yourself? What are you able to do? And he's speaking to us in such a way to say to us that we should be mindful of the moment that we are living in and and the work that God has given us to do and the things that we need to do. The Lord God understands our needs and, and he also understands our wants. He, uh, he will see you through every situation or circumstance that you are going through. Matthew um, chapter 6 and verse 31 speaks to us is that when it says to us, Therefore take no thought, saying, What shall we eat? What shall we drink? What shall we be clothed in? This, this is important that we don't be 
worried about these things because God will provide for us. God will make sure that there is something to eat that, and he'll make sure that we will have something to drink and he will clothe us yes. if we learn how to trust him. Yes. You need to uh, trust in the Lord as it is written in Proverbs 5, 3, and 6. Uh, trust in the Lord with all thine heart and lean not to thine own understanding. In, in all thy ways acknowledge him and he shall direct thy path. Yes. Trust God. Know uh, that he is able, that he will do the things that are necessary for you. Don't lean on your own understanding because your understanding is, 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 is limited to your experiences or those things that you read or things that somebody told you about. But God is awesome and mighty. He knows things that has never been written. He knows things that have never been done yet. Yes. And he's able to correct things that are wrong and if you uh, uh, will give him the glory you will acknowledge him in all your ways he will direct or guide your path yeah. but you must learn to trust him with all your heart your mind and your soul if we are Christians and, and say that we love the Lord then we must be willing to trust in him and believe that he will do what he promised us he would do yeah. we must be willing to cast our cares upon the Lord and have faith that he's a promise keeper. Yeah. First Peter uh, uh, chapter 5, verses 6 and 7, speak to us, uh, humble yourself therefore under the mighty hand of God. Humble yourself. Don't always exalt yourself. Don't always puff yourself up, but humble yourself therefore under the mighty hand of God. In other words, let yourself be able to allow God to protect you and to provide for you and to keep you. And it says that that and if, if you do this, you don't have to exalt yourself. It says that he may assault you in due time. Yes. That God will assault you. Yes. Casting all your care upon him, for he cares for you. Yes. God cares for his children. He cares for mankind. He cares for the human being. He cares about what's going on. He already knows. He already is working on the answer. He already has, have a kill for what we are dealing with. That's what our God is. Yeah. And Psalms 37, 3 and 4 says, trust in the Lord and do good. Yeah. Do good. We can't follow and be like the evil of the world. We must do good. Yes, Lord. So, so shall thou dwell in the land, and verily thou shalt be fed. Trust in the Lord and do good. Yes. Yes. So shall thou dwell in the land, and verily thou shalt be fed. Mm -hmm. and delight yourself. Be happy in the Lord. Delight thyself also in the Lord, and he shall give thee the desires of thine heart. People say, I know God will, will provide us the things that we need, but sometimes I want a little bit more. But if you trust in him and you delight yourself, in other words, delight yourself means be happy in the Lord, glorify him, be happy that you know him, be happy that he, he's your savior, yes. then he shall give thee the desires of your heart. That's what his word said. His word don't lie. We must make sure our heart is clear and full of, of light because darkness will cloud our decisions and our way of thinking. Matthew 6, 22 and 23 says, The light of the body is the eye, therefore that I be sight, be singer, the whole body shall be full of light. Yes. Be full of light. God, Jesus is the light of the world. Yes. But if that eye be evil, thy whole body shall be full of darkness, and therefore the light that is in thee be darkness. How great is that darkness? Will you let it consume you? Will you let it take you out? Will you let it destroy who you are? Will you allow that darkness to carry out? Will you allow the light to come into your life? Because darkness can't comprehend light. Darkness will leave when light comes in. Amen. Psalms 
37, David talks to us about uh, the happy state of believers and the short-lived prosperity of the wicked. Sometimes we see the wicked around us that look like they're doing so good. They're driving the nicest car, living in the nicest home, wearing the nicest clothes, carrying themselves, going out eating, doing everything, seeing like it happened. But in Psalm 37, it tells us to fret not thyself because of, of, of evil. Do neither be thy enemies of against the workers of iniquity. For they shall soon be cut down like grass yes, and wither as the green herb. Yes. Short-lived prosperity. If you trust in God, your prosperity will be gradual and continuously and coming day in and day out. God will be there for you. It will never stop. Here your, your cup overflows. Fool will be set before you in the presence of your enemy. He will make your enemies your footstool if you trust in God. The problem that most of us face is the lack of patience. And we believe that everything should go our way. We believe that we are entitled to perfection in our lives and don't realize the drama that is caused in the lives of others with our selfishness and our self-righteous behavior. We, uh, we are quick to mourn in our times of trouble and seek reason for the sufferings of others. Yes. If we only would take time to examine ourselves, we would find many self-inflicted wounds. Yes. Yes. We'll find out that a lot of the problems that we have are not caused by other people, are not caused by other circumstances, but these are things that are caused by us. Yes. Yes. We want to be loved but we push away those who love us. We want to be cared for, but pick to choose who we want to care for us. We want to be understood, but we seek not those that understand. Our problem is we are always try to put the cart before the horse. In other words, before God can answer your prayer, you hurry off to find your answer, the answer that you want. And many times when God do answer our prayer, we don't want his answer. We look for something else. And if the answer doesn't appear to be what we want and, and think it should be, we dismiss it. Yes. And find our own answer. And find ourselves in a worse situation than our original situation. That's why we must put first things first. Jesus in the book of Matthew, the sixth chapter says to us, seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. All these things shall be added to you. First, seek God. Then inquire of God. Ask God and search God's word on the matter, but always go to God first before you make decisions that may affect your life forever. Yes, and when you rise in the morning, seek his spirit to guide you through the day. Yes. Seek his righteousness uh, in your matters of concern. Be sure that you are, are not deceptive or dishonest with your dealings with the Lord and your yes. Dealings with other people. Always come straight with people and come straight with God. For God knows that your heart then is pure and full of love. Yes. And God knows that it's the light of God that's in yes. you yes. and not the darkness of evil. Amen. This is the uh, method of seeking God first in our lives. We must be ready to accept and choose the ways of the Lord. Now, Isaiah tells us now, in Isaiah 55 and 8, says, for my thoughts are not your thoughts. This is, this is what God is saying to us, that, that, that our thoughts are not, uh, are not your thoughts. Neither are your ways my ways, says the Lord. Uh -huh. So we need to understand that his thoughts are greater than our thoughts. His ways are greater than our ways. So let us explore three distinct things in putting first things first as a philosophy in our lives. First thing we need to do is you must know the Lord in Proverbs uh, 1 and 7 says that the fear of the Lord is the beginning of knowledge, but fools despise wisdom and instructions. Yeah. You must fear God. You must know who God is. You must know that God is an awesome and a mighty God, that he has all power in his hand, that he's able to do all things but fail. You must know him and you must fear him. The beginning of knowledge starts with us fearing God. We don't want to be a fool where we despise wisdom and instruction where anybody's trying to tell us something that we don't want to believe in because it don't, it don't fit in our program. We don't have no program. Yes. Yes. We need to understand.
understand that God is our God and God is able to do all things but fail us. Second thing in, in knowing him is Jesus said unto him uh, in 14 and 6 of John, and said that I am the way, I am the truth, and I am the life. No man can come unto the Father but by me. To know him is to know that there is no way into the kingdom of glory except through Jesus Christ. Yes. He is the way, that he is the truth, everything about him is true, and he is life. He is life, not just regular life, but he is abundant life. Yes. Yes. Second thing that we must understand is that you must sacrifice to bring about change. You cannot stay in the same state, in the same condition, day in and day out, and expect change to come about. So you must change. Romans 12 and 1 tell us that I beseech you therefore, brethren, by the mercy. Because Paul talking to us that by the mercies of God, he said, this ain't even got nothing to do with you or I. He said, but it's by the mercies of God that you present your bodies a living sacrifice. That you go to the Lord and say, here I am, Lord, take me, take my body as a living sacrifice. And, and, but, but in order for you to be a living sacrifice, you must be holy and acceptable unto God. Which is your reasonable service. Many people get caught up into that and say, well, I'm not holy because they don't understand holiness. And they believe that holy means I'm perfect. And that's not what the Lord God is trying to talk to us about and instruct us about. That's not what Paul is saying here. Holy, in this, in this case, he's saying to us that we have chosen the Lord and that we are holy because he is holy. Yes. Yes. Acceptable to God, meaning that I'm a willing vessel. Yes, Lord. I'm a willing vessel I'm, that, 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 that I have made myself accessible to God to use in any way that he see fit. He can come and, and, and tell me to go, and I'll go. And he can come and say, you must be here. And I ask him, how long do you want me to be here? Yes, he can say, who will go for us? And I say, send me, Lord. Oh, yes, That's what is being acceptable unto God. And Romans 12 and 2 goes on and says that we got, we, we, we got to have a changed mindset. Be not conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of, the, of your mind that you may prove what is good and acceptable and the perfect will of God. Yes. Different way of thinking. Can't think like we used to think. Can't see the end of the tunnel, but we know it exists. We know yes. that it's there. We know that God is able. We know that it's going to be all right. We know that in the end, we win. Then Romans 12 and 3 says to us, and says, For I say, uh, through the grace given unto me, to every man that is among you, not to think of himself more highly than he ought to think. But to think soberly according to as God has dealt to every man the measure of faith. Yeah. In other words, don't always try to be the top of the class. Uh -huh. In other words, if you're not the top of the class, you still have the same importance to God yeah. for who you are. Don't try to step on other people or try to climb over other people to get where you want to be. But right. as you go on up, pull them along with you. That you all will be there at the same time. That you all will do. Don't, don't, don't be think soberly, meaning don't, 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 don't be intoxicated on you. Yeah. Thinking that you look better than everybody else. You dress better than everybody else. You make more money than everybody else. But, 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 but deal with life as God has given you a measure of faith. In other words, that measure of favor that he's placed upon you. Understand that that blessing that, has, that you have has come because God has shown you favor. Number three, faith. 
must be your key. Hebrews 11 and 1 tells us that faith is sustenance of things hoped for, evidence of things not seen. We must have faith. We must believe in the impossible. We must believe that God can do things uh, in our lives that we believe that we we had we 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 had uh, things in our mind said that we couldn't get across that river, but the Lord said, "Yes, you can. Oh, yeah. Yeah. If you trust me, I'll I I can you cross the yeah. river. Yeah. I I will make a way out of no way. I will fix a path that no other man has ever traveled down. Yeah. I will make it possible for you to do yeah. these things." And the other thing that, that comes to mind in Hebrews, it comes in Hebrews 11 and 6, says, but without faith it's impossible to please God. If you, if you can't believe that God can and God will, then you can't please God. You can't make God happy. He can't be happy with you. For he that cometh to God must believe that he is. You must believe that God is and that he is a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. That's what you must believe, that he is who he said that he is. He said, Moses said to him, said, God, who would I tell them that sent me? He said, tell them that I am. I am. I am whoever you need me to be. I am the mighty God. I am the awesome God. I am your brother. I am your sister. I am your mother. I am your father. I am your husband. I am your wife. I am your peace. I am your love. I'm your all and your all. I am that I am. That's who I am. Water. Those that diligently seek him. Seek you first. The kingdom of God and his righteousness. First things first. Yeah. Seek God first. Seek him first in all things. Don't go out here and think that you can take on the whole world, yeah. that you can own it all, that you that everything can be yours without first knowing. Who God is. Yes. First things first. Seek the kingdom of God. Seek out his holiness. His righteousness. Seek him in your life. To bring him into your life. That you might know him for yourself. Not what others say. But that what you say about him. Yes. How great. How mighty. How he's changed your life. How he healed you from your sickness. How he made you whole. Seek that first the kingdom of God. And all. the mighty hand of our Savior to be around you and to lead you throughout your day. Yes. And don't be worried about what tomorrow will bring. Yes. One thing that I can, in my closing, I want to tell you, I don't know what tomorrow may bring mm. or what tomorrow might hold. But I do know who holds tomorrow. Yes. And that's my God. Oh, yeah. That's my Savior. Yes. That's my Jesus. Mm -hmm. That's my Jehovah. Yes. That's my Yahweh. That's my mighty God. Yes. That's my awesome God. Yes. I know who holds tomorrow. Yes. That's why I put first things first. And I will go to Jesus. I will go to God first to seek his kingdom. Knowing that he's able yes, to bless me and yes. to show me the way. Church family, seek God first. Yes. There might be one out there seeking God as they're looking for a saving, looking for answers. The answer is in the kingdom of God. If you can just take a moment and trust him and ask him to come into your life and choose him as your savior, he will come. He will come. Pray with me. Father God, in the name of Jesus, I come to you as a sinner looking for a Savior. Lord God, I know that you are the, I know that Jesus is the Son of God and that 
and he died upon the cross for my sins and and I bow down and call upon his name for your words that he who calls upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. So I claim that victory of salvation now through my Savior, Jesus the Christ, who I now call my master. Oh, Lord God, take me just as I am. All the wrong that I've done, I ask for forgiveness for, Lord God. And I ask you for your protecting and your healing hands around me. Bless you right now. If you pray this prayer, then God has heard you, and he will come into your life, and he will save you from your sins. We pray that somehow, some way, we have blessed you today, that you have found hope through the word of God, because there is hope and love through the word of God. So God bless you now as we prepare to close. We look to the Lord for healing upon our sick brothers and our sisters, Lord God, that you may touch their bodies, Lord God. We hear that you may protect our country, Lord God, that you may protect each and individual that is on the sound of my voice, that you may be with them, that your spirit may rest, rule, and abide in our lives henceforth and forevermore. In Jesus' name we pray, amen, amen, and amen. God bless you. We hope you have enjoyed this broadcast and that it has been a blessing to you. If you would like to contact us for prayer, our on-call ministerial staff at Barnes Memorial Missionary Baptist Church and Antioch Missionary Baptist Church would love to pray with you. Our prayer line is 252-450-5562. Give God a try. Prayer works. Prayer changes things. Just give us a call. God bless. Thank you for participating in Worship and Giving. Checks and money orders may be written to Barnes Memorial Baptist Church. P.O. Box 693, Whittakers, North Carolina, 27891. If you would like to give by phone, you may give through our phone app, GiveLify. It is available at the Google Play Store and the Apple App Store. Just download it, select Barnes Memorial Baptist Church, and tap Give. Then select your gift amount. Thank you for your generous donations. God bless.